Which one I talk into? All of them. All right. Can they hear me? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna keep it short. Oh shit. <laughs> nah, it, it drops. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to keep it short. Uh, for sure, I'd like to thank all my coaches. Wait, hold on. First, thank God for putting me in this position. Um, for sure, thank all my coaches, Coach Cruz, Coach, Coach White, uh, Coach Grove. Thank my parents, my brothers, for pushing me since I was five years old to um, play football. Um, like I said, I'm going to keep it short. Uh, so with that being said, I'll be committed to the University of Texas. What we doing? What we doing? What we doing? University High School. Ryan, you went through a whirlwind recruitment. Mm -hmm. What made the Longhorns and Steve Sarkeesian's program stand up? Uh, I think just that the Sarkeesian offense and how he utilized his receivers um, is just different. You know, they get the, they get the ball to their receivers, and he want to go play somewhere where they get the, the receivers the ball, and they got the quarterback. So let's do it. What is the University of Texas getting? In Ryan Wingo when he arrives on campus. I think getting a hard worker from 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 St. Louis, you know. Uh, I gotta put on for St. Louis while I'm up there, so you know they getting a hard worker who's gonna come in and try to compete from the start. Ryan, a lot of people here today thought that you were going to Missouri leading mm -hmm. into this week. What changed over the last week or so that led you to the University of Texas? Like I said, uh, Sarkeesian offense is different. Uh, he get he get his receivers the ball and everything like that. So I think just from that standpoint, you know, you, you, go, you want to go play somewhere where you get in the ball. So that's, that's the big thing. Congratulations, Ryan. Thanks. Emily, back to you guys in Nashville. Thank you so much, Carl. There you have it. Breaking news, five-star wide receiver Ryan Wingo has committed to Texas. He is the 19th commit for the Longhorns top 20 class. Cooper, how big a win is this for Sark? It's a huge one. You go into Texas, get a guy like Ryan Wingo, the five-star, and immediately I think about Waddle, Judy, Henry Ruggs, all these Ooh. guys that Steve Sarkeesian developed mm -hmm. in Tuscaloosa. Now you got Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, right? Chetavian Sanders, even though he's a tight end, there's going to be some production that I think Texas will have to replace if these guys end up leaving for the NFL. And you think about a guy like Ryan Wingo, he mentioned the quarterback, right? Whether mm -hmm. that's Malik Murphy, whether that's Arch Manning, whether that's Quinn Ewers getting hurt, we don't know, right? But that quarterback situation in Austin, we know it's special. It's probably the best in the country. So Ryan Wingo wants to go to a place where he can play early. I think Xavier Worthy kind of cleared that path for him there. And this is a, a spot in Austin he can step up, find a place to get on the field, and make an impact really, really early. A massive win for Steve Sarkeesian and the Longhorns. Let's bring in Steve Wilfong to talk a little bit more about how this all went down. Because, Steve, we were chatting about this earlier. It seemed like Georgia was a leader at some point, and then Missouri, and then Texas. Steve, if you're there and you can hear me, uh, how did this all go down? What can you tell us? Well, I got a text message from Ryan Bingo's dad at about 7, 12 in the morning asking me if I was up. Is something that changed in this recruitment. It is no longer going to be Missouri. It was Texas. And I think in the end, this is where Ryan truly wanted to be. He silently committed to the Longhorns during his visit for the Wyoming game. And then the Longhorns in the end were able to hold off a strong run by Missouri. The in-state the in -state poll, he took two visits to campus, also saw them play on a neutral site. But he fell in love with Texas during his official visit in the summer. Again, gave the silent commitment for Wyoming game and then had to hold on. I thought he was going to Missouri till this morning when the when the Wingo camp reached out to me very early and told me there was a change. Man, what a win for them. Steve, we, we talked about just how crazy this commitment was um, to follow. Now that it has reached its finality, uh, I think that there are other schools saying, 
what what happened here? Where where do we go from here? So let's speak on the Missouri end of things. Where does Mizzou now turn? Well, I think they're going to just turn it up another notch here in the Ryan Wingo sweepstakes. They're going, you know, nothing was signed today. Uh, so Missouri is not going to go away in the recruitment of, of Ryan Wingo as they try and, and, and continue to pursue the state's best. Jeremiah McClellan's another one committed to Ohio State right now. He's been to Missouri for the LSU game. They're going to keep pushing for him as well. So I don't expect much to change other than they know for sure that Texas is the one to beat right now, and they're trying to change that. Oh, my goodness. We do have a few months to go until signing day. We know uh, if anything happens, you'll be all over it. Steve, thank you so much for uh, breaking it all down for us. Let's uh, continue to talk about Ryan Wingo, the player here. How does he fit in offensively? At Texas, you mentioned the Arch Manning piece of it. Does Quinn Ewers come back? Malik Murphy would like to have a say in that, but how does he fit into this Sarkeesian offense? Pretty effortlessly, right? Okay. Steve Sarkeesian, arguably the best play caller in all of college football. I think you just give him another toy in Ryan Wingo. I've talked a lot about the combination of skill sets that Ryan Wingo offers. I think he is one of the best run after catch receivers in the 2024 cycle. You mentioned that we got eight of those guys stacked inside the top 32. So I think Ryan Wingo, his ability to get on the field, translate the one thing that always translates significantly from day one is speed, right? And then I think physically as well at his stature, 6'2", 200 pounds plus, I think he's going to be ready to go. If I'm Texas, the first thing that Steve mentioned, right? You got to get him to the finish line. You got to get that that ink to dry on the uh, on the uh, NLI or whatever, and get everything mixed up. But if you get that done, get him to campus as quickly as possible. Get him acclimated. And I think this is a guy that can have a huge impact as a freshman. Like I said, it could take him a little bit of time, but you can't argue with all the physical tools that he has. <laughs>